we're here at Lake Meredith at Plum Creek and uh, looking at a uh, biological control of salt cedar. Uh, salt cedar is a invasive plant that uh, uses a lot of water and kind of degrades the environment that it's in. It's usually found in riparian areas where there is a good source of water. We sprayed over 20,000 acres of salt cedar and we're convinced that, that what we've sprayed so far has used more water than all of our member cities combined. And so it's a, it's a huge water hog, and, and, and the goal here is just to try to help Lake Meredith out, you know, and getting some more water to the lake. And what the goal here is, is to come in and maintain what we've already done, and we're really encouraged with what we've seen today. In 2004, we started a program to release a beetle that feeds on salt cedar. And uh, we've had kind of varying degrees of success over the years. Uh, some of our early releases may have been with the wrong species of beetle or the wrong ecotype, came from the wrong area of the world and the, uh, just didn't sit well with this situation. Over the years we've made various releases in Lake Meredith and uh, the surrounding areas of the beetle and we think we finally got a really good take and we've got a good establishment of a beetle that came from Crete, uh, the island off of uh, Greece. Uh, the latitude is one of the most important considerations that we have because the beetle's reproductive cycle is based on photoperiod. If there aren't enough hours of light uh, during the summer, the beetles will think that it's going into fall and they'll start to hibernate early and they burrow into the ground and they starve to death during the winter. But we think we've got the right uh, biotype now and it's taken off here at Plum Creek and it's done some extensive defoliation. This is the second summer that they have uh, come out of hibernation. They spent the winter here, so we think we have a pretty good establishment. There are several egg masses here, and I'm just looking at them to see if they're hatched. Um, none of them have hatched yet, and I think that's probably because it's still pretty cool in the evenings. Um, some of them are a little dark looking, so I was just looking to see what the problem was. I think they were actually frozen. That's why they're not hatching right now, but as the weather warms up, they will. The, uh, the salt cedar beetle can do a lot of damage in just one season. Uh, the adults and the larvae both girdle the little twigs and they can cause complete defoliation even of mature trees. Of course if you have a big healthy tree it's going to take a couple years of defoliation to actually kill it. But smaller trees and seedlings could be killed in the first season. So it's, it's kind of an ongoing process but we're really happy that we could see even up to 100% defoliation of mature trees perhaps this summer. And I also need to mention that when we started this project, we probably couldn't have even gotten off the ground if we hadn't had the uh, help of the Canadian River Municipal Water Authority. Uh, they provided us with some funding and obviously access to salt cedar sites and some protected sites where we knew we could release these beetles and they wouldn't be disturbed. And uh, I think that's helped us quite a bit with this project.